Do you love improv? Because I do. I'm Trent Dozier, host of I Love Improv with Trent Dozier. Join me live on twitch.tv slash the Trident Network every second and fourth Wednesday, where I'm joined by a new guest each episode to talk about and do some improv. Can't catch it live? No worries. Each episode gets turned into a podcast for your listening pleasure. Podcast episodes are released the Wednesday following the live show. So watch live or listen later. But either way, if you love improv, make sure to check out I Love Improv with Trent Dozier, a part of the Trident Network. I can't play hockey. I'm only getting a C- in geometry. What does that have to do with hockey? You'd have to ask my brother, although I don't recommend it. Plus, those uniforms are hideous. I can't do it. Hey, Talon, listen to me. Everyone knows you cannot pull fish out of pond without labor. Do you want to train with me? Yes. Do you want to be the best? Yes. Do you want your face on cereal box? More than anything. Then there is no alternative. You will play hockey. Here is your schedule. When will I find time to train? In the blocks I marked red. Now, go get your fish. And admittedly, that was a little Jean Claude Van Damme. So, um, <laughs> my apologies. That's great. Catalan. Catalan. Hey, Val. Hey, Al. Hey, Damon. Hey, Val. Hey, Al. Welcome to Deep Commentaries. Thank you. Welcome to you. Welcome to our listeners. And welcome to our very special guest, Damon. Damon, Ooh. hi. Yay. Hi. I'm going to cheer for myself. Yay. Yay. <laughs> we love you, Damon. Oh, thank you. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for having me. And what a what a movie I've never seen before. <laughs> Same. Uh, Same. Damon, introduce yourself to the listeners. Yes. Uh, hello, listeners. I'm Damon Royster. I am, you know what? I'm going to say it. I'm an LA comedian. I yeah. maybe spent some time in Chicago for my whole life, but now I live in LA. Um, yeah, I write, I act. I directed a short film recently. And, um, you know, I, 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 I do a lot. I do a lot. You're and doing I'm, all the things. All the That's things. Awesome. And Don't be humble. Be braggy. I'll be braggy. <laughs> I'm great, but I am going to take a break next month. It's, hey, I'm we tired. all deserve a break. Val told yeah. me I deserved a break today. That's why I showed up here recording in my pajamas. <laughs> That's right. Powerful. We I all deserve it. breaks. Wow, that's yeah. amazing, Damon. Yeah. You should, when you were like, should I say it? You are an LA comedian, okay? Yes. I see yes. your name on my Twitter. I see your name on my Instagram stories, okay? Mm-hmm. You are mm-hmm. happening. I'm happy. I post. You uh, post. Add the story. I will. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you for penciling us into your busy schedule. Tr- truly. I mean, thank you for doing I think this is months in advance. I think. We're nothing we're, if not planners. We are. <laughs> We are a uh, time timeout planners. We are gonna we're gonna sit like I think we have a guest scheduled for like November. Like we're wow. ready. <laughs> we're ready. And mm-hmm. I respect that. I respect that a lot. So thank you. Thank you. Well, you yeah. also have a podcast. I do. I do. It's a Marvel movie podcast. Uh, but we also do Marvel shows as well. Uh, it's called Podcast Six One Six. Love. And yeah, I have comedians on. We talk about Marvel movies and. Um, it's a fun time. I think I'm That's a pretty, amazing. I'm a pretty fun host. And for those of not of people <laughs> who maybe don't understand what the six one six stands for, maybe <laughs> someone out there, not me, because I definitely know what does that mean. Of course, yeah, we all understand what the six one six means because we're all Marvel experts. But yeah, you know, I will say that is also my thesis statement with the podcast. I love bringing on uh, people who have never seen a Marvel movie before. I've had people watch their first Marvel movie for this podcast, and I think it's universal. It can all be enjoyed. But if we have to go into this for the people who don't know, six one six is the uh, the Earth number of where Marvel movie the Marvel movies take place because every, because Marvel in the multiverse, there's infinite number of earths, but the one we're looking at is earth 616, 616. Okay. Mm -hmm. I understand some multiverse because of Val. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. Thank you, Val. Mm -hmm. I am following. Thank you. 
Yes. And everyone who didn't know is thanking me for asking. Mm -hmm. I can (laughs) hear them. Yes. (laughs) Yeah. Al has has inevitably absorbed some things about Marvel and Star Wars just via osmosis. (laughs) It's true. (laughs) I've seen three Thors. Oh, and there's only four. (laughs) I I got one more to watch. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> honestly if you liked two you're f- gonna be fine <laughs> i liked two really man this is what we're working with david <laughs> okay let's, let's move on <laughs> no shame i'm just I'm genuinely surprised it's like a statistically significant number that al likes that <laughs> man yeah renee russo's great she is she is she great. amazing um well, let us let us dive into our flick, uh, which we haven't even named yet. Uh, today, we're talking about Go Figure. <laughs> Boo. <laughs> Boo. Uh, we didn't like it. Go figure. Go figure. <laughs> Podcast over. That's all we needed to yeah. say. No, no. I have a lot to say. Oh, David has a lot to say. Excellent. Well, let's get through the business real quick, and then we'll get to all of your thoughts. Do your business, Val. I will right now. Uh, Okay, Go Figure came out June 10th, 2005. So we're still in the quarterly system. It was directed by Francine McDougal, uh, who will also direct Cowbells in the future. Mm -hmm. She hasn't directed a ton of films, but it says in her bio that she's a big commercial director. So I presume that's why her resume looks thin, but probably isn't. Mm -hmm. It was written by Patrick J. Clifton and Beth Rigazio, who had like more or less the same resume. So I'm presuming that they're writing partners. Mm. They also wrote future decom read it and weep. Okay. And they also wrote raising Helen. Oh, that's uh, a uh, movie. That is a movie. With Um, that hot guy. And that hot woman. It's isn't it Mark Ruffalo and Kate? No. Kate Hudson. Kate Hudson and man in my big fat Greek wedding. John Corbett. Yes. Mm. It's John Corbett. Oh, yeah. That's right. I'm conflating. Wait, no. Isn't the John Corbett one? Wait, I'm conflating the one where Reese Witherspoon's in a coma. Mm -hmm, That that is Mark Ruffalo. That's Mark Ruffalo. (laughs) What is it? Just like heaven? Yep. Yes. Yes. Wow. Look at they're so hot. They're so hot. They are. I mean, I don't. God, I don't want to derail us too much, but do you guys watch How I Met Your Father? Yes. Oh, my no. God. Hot, and, except for the mutton chops. What's happening? I know. He had mutton chops in season two, and I was like, no, thank you. Um, but <laughs> love that storyline. It was great. Oh, yeah. Big hmm. fan. Might have to check it out. Um, okay. N- the cast is as follows. Jordan Danger, who at the time went by Hinson. I don't know if Danger is is her married name or just something she changed her name to, but it definitely says Danger on IMDb, played Caitlin Kingsford. She's a character actor. She's been in some stuff. The only things where she was in for like an extended period of time was the show Eureka and the show Kevin from Work. Mm. Mm-hmm. Wasn't in any other DCOMs. Okay. Brittany Curran played her rival Pamela. Uh, she was in 13 Going on 30, Al. Oh. Yeah. She was in uh, Men of a Certain Age, Dear White People. She had a multi-episode arc on Chicago Fire. And most recently, she was in The Magicians. Cool. Mm-hmm. Whitney Sloan played Amy Hollywood Henderson. Uh, she wasn't in much, and she stopped acting in 2007. Christine Rose played Natasha Goberman. <laughs> Who Damon was being in the cold open. She, which by the way, Goberman is not a Russian name. No. Just putting it out there. What? Do you mean this actress wasn't Russian? <laughs> Damon was tell. more Russian in the cold yeah, open Damon's than she definitely was. Definitely more Russian. <laughs> Thank you. Oh my God. Caitlin. <laughs> Caitlin. <laughs> she was in two. Uh, I knew her. You know her? Well, I just, I've seen her before. Let's put it that oh. way. Uh, oh, okay. Because she was in uh, Heroes, the TV show. That's right. That's right. Ooh. Yeah, that's like her biggest role is she was on Heroes. That's so sad. But she did, speaking of How I Met Your Father, she played Ted's mom on How I Met Your Mother. Yep. Mm-hmm. She also played Paul Rudd's mom on Friends in season 10. Wow. Oh. 
I, if I remember correctly, she did not like Phoebe. Correct. Mm-hmm. Season mm-hmm. nine, season 10. Yeah. Uh, she was in a show I didn't know existed, uh, Ferris Bueller's Day Off TV show. Oh. They tried that? Mm-hmm. <laughs> she was also in the Clueless TV show, which I did actually know about because I know someone who was on it, but otherwise I would not have known oh my God. Wow. either. Yeah. Uh, she was also on Ellen, which I only bring up because we just interviewed Holly Folger mm-hmm. last week for a special bonus episode, and she was also on the first season of Ellen, she so sure they overlapped. Mm. yep Looking so up. yeah she she and she's a character actor the christine uh rose she's been in tons like one episode of everything yeah right this was just stuff that like she was on more than one episode or whatever cool and that's true of a lot of people in this cast ryan Malgerini played bradley kingsford mm-hmm. uh the handsome young man um he was in freaky friday yes yes those are the Very two, recognizable. Probably, two biggest actors yeah. was Christine and this guy. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, he was, you know, he's a character actor, but the only other thing that he was in for an extended period of time was something called Gary Unmarried. Hmm. I don't know. His Instagram bio says formerly or like former actor, former child mm. actor. So I. So. Yeah. He's moved on. Yeah. He's private, too. I requested him. Can you like nice. us back? Thank you. Can you let <laughs> us into your so. life? Thank you. <laughs> uh, Tanya Gunadi played Mary Mojo Johnson. Uh, you might remember her from Pixel Perfect. Uh, and she was also in the show Enlisted. And she mostly does a lot of voice acting. Mm. Mm-hmm. That's where the money is. That's right. Truly. And you can wear PJs to work. So I think it's the best option. Mm hmm. Amy Halloran played Ronnie, who does not get either a nickname or a last name, apparently. Uh, it's like Cher. She, <laughs> she's the captain of the hockey team. Um, she was in a, a number of things, but um, she was in something called Surviving Christmas, which <clears throat> I, I'd never heard of before, but Ben Affleck was in it. So, Well, now I have to look it yeah. up. You mentioned my favorite word. <laughs> and then she was also in In Her Shoes, which is a movie with um, Cameron Diaz and Tony Collette, I think, is also in it. Yeah. Um, good movie. You just named Surviving Christmas and In Her Shoes are two movies. I, I know the covers perfectly. Yeah. But I've never yeah. watched either movie. <laughs> but I've seen. Interesting. Like they've, they're always like floating around in like my suggestions. I'm like, I'm not going to watch these. It's James Gandolfini, <laughs> Christina Applegate and Catherine O'Hara. Are in surviving uh, Christmas. surviving Christmas. Yeah. Okay, maybe I will watch it <laughs> along with Ben Affleck pre <laughs> right. Back Tech Two. Wow. Oh, never mind then. <laughs> yeah. I, wait. <laughs> Not worth it. <laughs> it has an eight on Rotten Tomatoes. Wow. The number eight. <laughs> so so worth it. <laughs> worth a watch. I'm literally gonna go home and watch it tonight. <laughs> oh God. Uh, um, but in her shoes is actually not bad. I will say that at least the last time I watched it, which was probably 15 years ago. Mm. <clears throat> um, okay. Sabrina Spear played Shelby singer. Who was that? Oh, this was the, kind of like, me with everyone you're mentioning. This right was now. the, <laughs> this was the older, uh, figure skater who looked like she was like 37, mm. who was supposed to be 17. I, I wasn't sure if that oh. was intentional. Like if they cast someone who was meant to look I'm way 17. older. Um, I remember Shelby. But this was actually her last movie. Mm. What? Yeah. She, she said I peaked. <laughs> she peaked as Shelby Singer, who I didn't even remember who she you was. You guys, Damon laughed at my joke. He thinks I'm funny. <laughs> Oh yeah, I'm sorry. Is that not is that not allowed? <laughs> no, it, no, no. It's the only she thing keeping it. me alive. Actually, it's like <laughs> Monsters Inc. Like laughs keep me alive. <laughs> heard, heard. <laughs> um, Jake Abel played Spencer, who is her brother. Um, Wait, he oh, no oh, no he's nope. the he's the love Spencer. interest. <clears throat> oh, that's Spencer. Wait. Oh, Brett. Wait. So Ryan Malgerini was. Bradley. was her brother yes yeah. the one from freaky friday mm-hmm. yeah whoops i think okay, you said jake that. abel no i said i definitely did not it's oh. fine oh. we're fine um jake abel played spencer the hot boy who she likes that's basically his entire personality oh, yeah. yeah he was in the lovely bones um the percy jackson movies 
Love and Mercy, which was about Brian Wilson, the show Supernatural and the show Walker, which both star Jared Padalecki, who was in um, A Ring of Endless Light, which is uh, yeah. a decom that we watched a while back. Oh, wow. Jared Padalecki did it this movie. He mm-hmm. did. Hmm. He did indeed. And it's also not good. <laughs> I didn't mind that one as much. It's be- like it's it. better than this one. <laughs> well, let's let me mama pull up my ratings and see if it is. <laughs> <laughs> While you do that, um, Christy Yamaguchi. Who's that? Appeared as herself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you don't recognize her from the Olympics or the news, <laughs> she was also made an appearance in D2, Mighty Ducks 2. Something called On Edge, which looked very much like this kind of movie. And she was in an episode of Fresh Off the Boat. Oh, fun. Good for her. Yeah. Good for Christy. Yeah, good for Christy. She's crushing it. She's happy. She has family. She's doing great. Uh, Jody Russell played Linda Kingsford, who also played the mom in Right on Track, decom that we watched a little while ago. Least favorite character, just to give a preview. <laughs> Can't stand this character. I have <laughs> nothing but vitriol for that character. I can't wait to hear. Then we have Kurt Doucette as Ed Kingsford, their dad. So neither one of them really did much. Uh, So like I didn't even have anything to pull for him. Like it was all stuff I'd never heard of before. I wonder if they they filmed a lot of these movies in like Salt Lake City or like other places like that. And so these people like a lot of the adults in these movies were like like locals. So they were in like you know, stuff that was filmed around there, but not anything that was really widespread. Okay. Yes. Then we have Paul Kiernan as Coach Reynolds, uh, who played the dad in Luck of the Irish. Wow. Allie's least favorite character ever in a decom. I forgot that that is why I know this man. Well, thank I'm you for reminding me because I ruined hated it. <laughs> yeah, my that <nap> movie. <laughs> he was also in Double Teamed very briefly as well. So he has some decom chops. And then lastly, we had Anne Sward as Ginger, one of the two coaches, uh, like the original figure skating coaches. And uh, I only mention her because she was in both Johnny Tsunami and Buffalo Dreams. Ah. Uh. Our recently watched movie, Buffalo Dreams. That's right. Our just previously watched movie. Um, Okay. The synopsis is as follows. And Damon, I do not read the synopsis before I read it right now. So it's new for all of us together. Beautiful. Caitlin's a 14-year-old girl who's determined to make it in the world of figure skating when she discovers that famous Russian skating coach Natasha Goberman is coming to teach at a local private school. She's determined that Natasha will be her coach, even though it's an expensive school. Caitlin decides to try to get a scholarship. That, I don't think that's that, accurate. It's uh, not. <laughs> it's missing a crucial <laughs> word that is hockey. Right. And also, she doesn't decide to try to get a scholarship the, Natasha just tells her that that's what's going to happen yeah. Yeah. don't well, love that you, I have one fun fact for you all Okay, yes. you're going to love it it's, it's based sound, on sound, your impressions sounds so like a far. lot uh, Go Figure was nominated in the Young Artist Awards for Best Television Movie or Special no <laughs> no rigged <laughs> my theory is that there were only like four or whatever the number of Less nominees five, is. Yeah. Right. It's like that yeah. year of the Tony Awards during 2020 when there was only like two shows that actually had shows that year. And so then they right. all won. Mm-hmm. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yes. I am speechless from that fun <laughs> quote fact. This now. also had a full blown soundtrack. Mm-hmm. Uh, Where? And one of the song, <laughs> one of the songs was even sung by Brie Larson herself. Yeah. Uh, and another one by Raven Simone. You wow. know who that is? Because Marvel. I, I was going to say it's Captain Marvel. She, That's right. She's Captain Marvel of Marvel. Uh, and Raven. She is. And we all know Raven. We all know we Raven. Raven. Although I did just mispronounce her last name. Simone. Simone Yeh, Yeh. Which she all <laughs> corrected us on 30 years later. <laughs> wow. Simone. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, amazing. Okay, business done. Damon, mm -hmm. what were your first? Well, first of all, we know you haven't seen this movie before, Never. but like, what's your sort of general decom relationship? And then, what were your first impressions of this movie in particular? I mean, with decom things, I like what I like, and it kind of is just cemented in my mind the the movies that work. You know, obviously, we're talking Smart House, um, Xenon One. TBD on two and three. Haven't seen those in a while. Uh, two is amazing. Two is amazing. Two is amazing. <laughs> okay. Two is better than one. <laughs> two is better than one. I mean, thank you, math. Um, <laughs> the high school musical musicals. I, I have, a, they have a place in my heart. Um, up, up and away is a great Disney Channel original movie that I think a lot of people are sleeping on, especially. True. I think it just came out too early. If it came out now, we would, it would definitely be a part of the superhero conversation. I feel, mm -hmm. but you know, there's just like, oh, an ultimate Christmas present. That's a, that's a great one as well. Um, uh, Damon, man, what are these opinions? It's great. <laughs> Sometimes you want it to snow, and I get that. Oh wait, no. Okay, just no. Kidding. You liked Ultimate Christmas. I liked. Present. You ultimate think Christmas. he's talking about Twas the Night? Yes. Okay. Because oh. which was the worst? <laughs> you are correct. Okay, I did. I have my little ratings pulled up. Okay. I did give Ultimate Christmas Present an eight. I gave Twas okay. the Night a two. Oh, I don't even know. <laughs> I don't even know who that it, is. Which it's <laughs> leads me to. When I when you said it was gonna be Go Figure, I was like, hmm, a Disney Channel original movie I have not seen of seen or heard of. I bet it's gonna be bad. And boy howdy. <laughs> I was right. This movie, it's ambitious. I'll say that. Um to try and tackle two sports in one movie and have them both be given equal weight is a Herculean effort. <laughs> I would say for any movie. Mm -hmm. Um are we into my first impressions? Are we still? Oh, yeah, please. OK, proceed. This is just like how I feel about the movie. <laughs> yes, mm -hmm. I'm fresh from the fight. I just watched it and like an hour ago. Okay. Um, Perfect. I hated it. I <laughs> think it uh, it attacks this story from all the wrong angles. I think our hero, Caitlin, is kind of annoying. And um, when the bullying that she received, I feel is just. And um, <laughs> I did not feel bad for her ever in this movie. <laughs> um, I think all the adults are psychos, uh, <laughs> especially Bob and Ginger. Not really sure what's going on there. I mean, I have a theory about what's going on with that relationship. Um, <clears throat> it's arranged. <laughs> um, I think the, I think the little brother was soaring from his popularity in Freaky Friday and was giving a storyline that he did not need, or the movie did not need it. But I think because he was a big actor, they gave him more screen time than that character deserved. And I hate that the ending was psychotically happy for everyone. Um, I think there should have been some losses. I think someone should have lost. And the only loser, I guess, was Pamela and us and us i think pamela <laughs> and us are great <laughs> pamela did nothing wrong just for pamela <laughs> incredible al oh, thanks val <laughs> um i'm gonna just piggyback right off of damon and say i hate him <laughs> <laughs> i w was watching this movie accidentally moved my remote and went oh my god it's only been 20 minutes <laughs> because the time popped up on my tv this movie felt like seven years long i'm giving it a three it deserves no more points than that mm. just like mm. her final performance deserved a three mm. um <laughs> david has so many thoughts he's being very animated right now <laughs> <laughs> um, I really disliked this movie. I think overall they went about writing this specific story improperly and it was also executed improperly. Val, what were your first impressions? <laughs> oh, I also did not like this movie. I don't know if I feel quite as passionately as the two of you about it, but I, uh, 
the first thing that I wrote is, what is this Russian accent? And the second <laughs> note that I wrote is, so she sucks. Yeah. <laughs> and that was literally my first impressions of this movie. Um, I thought they picked the most unlikable actress to play the lead role in this movie. And she's supposed to be like not an underdog exactly, but kind of like it's this is a hard role because you're you're having to kind of toe that line between being kind of annoying and people like are kind of supposed to be jealous of you, but then also like showing that you want friendship and that you actually are a good person and she just doesn't execute. Yes, Damon, you have a thought. Rachel Berry. They were trying to do Rachel Berry. <laughs> they yes, were trying to do Rachel that's Berry. That's exactly it. Exactly it. Like extremely talented person who gets in their own way all the time socially. Like that's exactly yeah. what it is. Yep. And and say what you will about Leah Michelle. But oh, she, yeah, please she pulled say what you it want. off. <laughs> She pulled it off in a way that uh, Jordan Danger did not. <laughs> oh God. Well, um, I thought that nothing made sense in this movie. Like uh, the relationships, like none of them made sense. I thought the best actor in this entire movie was the little brother. But like you said, his storyline was pointless. But like he was the only person who like emoted in a normal human fashion uh, mm -hmm. on camera and everyone else was like fake mean at first, but then like actually nice immediately or like whatever, you know, like or people would do something like unforgivable to someone and then they would just be fine with it like two seconds later, like nothing, literally nothing made sense in this movie. So th that was more what I was getting caught up on the whole time. I was like. Why do the hockey players all of a sudden like her? Two seconds ago, they hated her. Like, I do not understand this at all. Like, have her have to do something to, like, earn their respect. Um, so, yeah, I was just kind of watching this movie going, what? The entire time. Um, and I don't know, like, what we were supposed to learn from this movie or, like, you know, gain <laughs> from watching this movie. Uh, I guess it's that you really can have everything and... It doesn't matter who you step on or, you know, who like does all your dirty work for you. You'll still get what you want. So great lesson. Yeah, that was my first impression. Um, Damon, did you have any uh, favorite quotes or moments? Um, yes. Uh, I love that we book in the film with dork. Uh, that was lovely. The rubber band snap is hilarious. <laughs> um she can't she gives away her scrunchie and uses a rubber band and it snaps and her hair falls down i mean one a motif that they only did it i think two or three times but they were trying to make it it was like this movie's fetch bootsy they kept saying things were bootsy yeah what was that what did that mean i have no idea i also loved uh <laughs> party 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 when they were at the party and they said, party, party. <laughs> that is it. me. <laughs> party, 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 party. How else would we know <laughs> that they're at a party? Uh, I like the line. I can't believe how much fun it is to have friends. Uh, <laughs> made me explode with laughter. And also my enemy of this movie is the mom. And I think one of my favorite moment was that, the mom sold her bed <laughs> <laughs> on eBay. <laughs> on eBay. Uh, the mom sucks. Um, okay. I think those are my big moments that I'll shout out. Amazing. Al? I do have a few good chunk of quotes. Great. Um, I think it's hilarious that they call the ice skater twirl girls mm -hmm. and that the uh. two worlds are completely separate and that they act like they don't know what goes on in hockey and they don't know what goes on in ice skating. And I, mm -hmm. I don't know if that's realistic or not. I feel like that seems far fetched that they're like, I don't know. I can't give an example, but I feel weird about it. I definitely think that like logistically they would have known that she was on the figure skating team a lot earlier just by being at the ice rink right like, the fact that they didn't know the whole time was ridiculous that and then one of my favorite parts is when she's 
she's an ice skater. She knows how to move on the ice. But the moment you put her in her gear, she like can't skate. She like doesn't know how to skate anymore. And I'm like, no, you know how to ice skate. Like, you're okay. Yeah. So also, I would argue hockey skates are easier to skate in than mm-hmm. figure skates. Not from what I've seen. <laughs> <laughs> Not from David Watch Galen. Okay, so then here are my favorite, some of my favorite quotes. Um, they say you're either a Britney or a Christina, but here on the ice, you're either a Christy Yamaguchi or a Tanya Harding. Both have their merits, but only one has a gold medal. Yeah. Love that. Can I just say mm-hmm. that line? Of course, it's Christy Yamaguchi and T- Tanya Harding because Tanya Harding is famously not connected to any other ice skater in ice skating right. history. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> but they had to go with the gold medalist, so. Oops. Oops. Okay. Fair, fair, fair. Oops. <laughs> but then love how she calls everyone. These girls are definitely Tanya's. <laughs> um, I lo- She gets asked, why do you skate? That's easy because the glitter. Amy Henderson, left wing. Caitlin Kingsford, moderate conservative. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote that down too. <laughs> um, you want a piece of me? No, honey. I want the whole thing. <laughs> They're at the they're at the party party and they go. She goes, this music is and someone fills in the blank and goes hip hop. And she goes, I was going to say fat. <laughs> P-H-A-T. <laughs> and it, this subtitle spelled out fat. Yeah, yep. I was like, oh, no. Um, <laughs> they know. Uh, uh, <clears throat> I didn't skate this hard just to fizzle out like a boy band fan club. Mm-hmm. And mama, let me tell you. Me and the Directioners still going strong, okay? The boy band <laughs> fan club still exists. Is that One Direction? Yeah, you bet okay. your sweet butt it is. <laughs> I think that's it. Oh, the only other, my favorite moment of the movie is when the coach tells her that she's going to, like, join the hockey team or whatever, and there's a, a shot of, a, there's a camera shot just of her yeah. mouth. <laughs> and I hated it. It was my favorite part. <laughs> Val! <laughs> there were two mouth shots, I believe. Oh, yes. I wasn't paying attention to the other one because I stopped caring. Mm-hmm. Um, I, Damon, I have to say, this is a day I'm really glad I'm not doing the synopsis. <laughs> and I think I've only said that one other time out of 52 times. Oh, I'm ready. <laughs> Val, do you have any favorite quotes or moments? Yeah, I do. I do know what it's like to watch your dreams slip away faster than a pierogi at a Vladimir Putin party. Timely. Timely. Yeah. Still. Timely still. And pierogi. Pierogi. Love a pierogi. Pierogi. Go team. Go change. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I liked it. A2 Hollywood. Way to reference Shakespeare. Perfect. <laughs> yep. Um, And then I had a couple of the ones that I already said. Um, My favorite. So my least favorite moment was every time Mojo did something that was culturally appropriative, because that was basically her entire character. Mm -hmm. And especially given the fact that this movie came out directly after Buffalo Dreams, which is literally talking about like Native American culture and respecting and revering other cultures than your own to have a character whose sole purpose is to go around doing like weird noises and saging things and whatever uh, felt very weird to me. My favorite moment is for some reason, (laughs) Caitlin's Jersey had her first name on it. (laughs) Like I didn't even notice that Mm -hmm. some of the team had their nicknames like Mojo and Hollywood most of them had their last names. And for some inexplicable reason, Caitlin's just said Caitlin wow. <laughs> instead of Kingsford. And I'm Caitlin. Yep. And it felt appropriate wow. uh, to her and her character. That's it for me. I feel ready to go right to Spoiler City. Oh, yeah. I'm skating already. Top is off. Yep. Top off. Skating in. Top off. Skate in. <laughs> Top Let's off. Skate in. <laughs> All right. Damon, you can take over whenever you're ready. I, I've i never been ready for anything more in my life. Go figure. Okay. <laughs> go, fi- go figure. Um, this is going to be very editorial. Um, so Perfect. <laughs> I hope you enjoy. Oh, All right. Go figure. Open on Mean Girls. <laughs> <laughs> Dork. 
Caitlin's getting bullied because she's so talented. Ugh, girl, I've been there. We meet the parents in Bradley. <laughs> Little did we know the mom is the ultimate evil, but that'll be revealed later. And Bradley is like the younger brother. He's like, I play hockey and I hate figure skating because that's for girls. Parentheses and gays, but we can't say that. It's <laughs> we also meet <laughs> two of the bizarre characters, Ginger and Bob. Um, are they married? Are they telling us that they're married? I don't know. For some reason, I thought they were like brother and sister, <laughs> but I might have just invented that in my head. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to say for me, Ginger and Bob were definitely married, but it was like an arranged marriage where like Ginger couldn't Ginger or Bob could not get their family inheritance unless they were married. Mm. Um, so I think they're waiting out an older relative's death because um, that because I'm going to tell you uh, gay recognized gay and Bob, <laughs> I see you. Um, <laughs> next up is Natasha Goberman. I think she's like hanging out at the ice rink or something. And Caitlin's all like, oh my gosh, that's Natasha Goldman. She's like so cool. So, you know, Caitlin's preparing for this big routine. It's like an ice skating competition. And um, this younger ice skater doesn't have her scrunchie. And her mom is like more inept than Caitlin's mom. And so Caitlin's like, oh my gosh, I can give you the scrunchie. Here you go. She gives her a scrunchie. And she's like, I've got my lucky rubber band. Her lucky rubber band, of course. Um, so she's doing like triple O spins, axles, and what have you. And snap goes the rubber band. Her hair falls. The industry is aghast. They cannot believe you cannot have flop hair on the rink. Disgusting. Um, but somehow with her floppy hair, she finishes the routine. She's done. She's like <laughs> excommunicado. Um, here we get the Brittany Christina Yamaguchi Tanya Harding comparison, which I've already said I disagree with. Uh, <laughs> Russian Natasha wants to work with her. This is the first instance we get of the nickname Sputnik. Why? Why? Saving the Russians. She's shooting to the stars. Sure. But honestly, Sputnik <laughs> just makes you think of potatoes in a roundabout way. So to me, <laughs> just like it's another like friend's called, reference. Right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> Damn Ross Geller. Uh, but it's just like she's like, oh, my little potato. Um <laughs> And basically, Natasha's like, you're good, but girl, you need work. Um, you need to work with me. No dream, but a nightmare. Was that said or is that a note I wrote? No, that sounds like something that Natasha said. Like, I don't know. Your dreams are nightmares or about to be nightmares or something like that. Mm. All right. Natasha Goberman, far too expensive for Caitlin. Um, she's talented yep. and poor. <laughs> Been there. Um, <laughs> We, I just wrote, this is when I realized the little brothers from Freaky Friday. So I wrote that note. Mm -hmm. So they come up with this convoluted plan where I think it's Natasha's idea where she's like, oh my gosh, I know. So I'm going to teach at this private academy. I, I'm going to teach ice skating at this academy. I'm friends with the hockey coach. I can bully him into giving you a hockey scholarship, which this feels terrible. Like, what if there's someone who actually wanted to play hockey and needed it's a scholarship? It's very Lori Laughlin getting my kid into rowing when I know they aren't rowers. <laughs> Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Felicity Huffman, William H. Macy, we have not forgotten. Um, <laughs> never forget. <laughs> never forget. So that's the plan. We, of course, have to have a close-up of Caitlin's mouth so we can hear that she's into this plan. Just full mouth. Full mouth. 16 by 9. Um, <laughs> the mom and Caitlin pack again. Little do we know, mom is the ultimate evil and villain of this piece. Um, she's like, Oh my gosh, please leave this house. Doesn't the mom like she's not into the plan or something? She's like not into it a little bit. I mean, this is spoiler city, so I can spoil it, but she's like wanting Caitlin to do a certain thing because she did a certain thing. So she's just kind of like meh about it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I think, yeah, I think she was like nervous for her because of like her experience mm -hmm. with figure skating. Yeah. And we got, you know, put my screenwriter cap on. Uh, there's a little bit of the theme stated about not getting too into one thing and opening yourself up to other things, which I think is a good mm -hmm. lesson for a kid's movie. Mm -hmm. I wish the movie had done that because they, what they <laughs> actually did was they did both things um, instead of giving up one thing. It's like, yeah. just do everything, which... I don't know. Is that why I'm a type A perfectionist in my 30s? <laughs> <Could be. laughs> um, whatever. First day of hockey. I think we, was this a dig on the team when Caitlin shows up to the ring? And she's like, where's the girls hockey team? Was she saying that they look like boys? Was that what was happening? 
I think it was just, she's an idiot. Yeah. Cause I'm like, <laughs> if you're whatever schedule is like, come to the rink for girls hockey team and you see everyone on the, on the rink dressed just like you, <laughs> does she have no deductive reasoning? No. Sorry. I hate Caitlin. <laughs> I just can't stop thinking of like them writing the script and being at like, uh, like the first table read and everyone like laughing at that line. Ugh. <laughs> I uh, I think it was a very quiet table read. Had to have been. Had to have been. They they went at eight, in it. They got in at eight and they wrapped by ten. Um, <laughs> we meet Spencer. I wrote Spencer dot 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 trouble. <laughs> Basically op- occupying the same space at the as the coach from Bend It Like Beckham. Mm. Kind of looks like him too, right? But he's like, but it's it doesn't work on me because I I know there's a better version out there. <laughs> um, we get the first instance of she's Bootsy. I, as in like she's fetch she's great she's bootsy i say that's terrible we we get some uh training montages here caitlin's struggling on the hockey team they're doing leg lifts on the ice i think caitlin is the rudest person in the world because after practice they like are playing music in the locker room and she's like i hate this and she just goes over and turns <laughs> off the boom box like girl that was put on on purpose I think she's just stupid. Like, she's just literally dumb. I think that was the point, too, where I was like, it's only been 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah. This is- Absolutely. All right. The coach hates glitter and costumes. I wrote, a.k.a. he's homophobic. Um, <laughs> and also the whole, I think this is where it comes out that the ho- hockey team hates the twirly girls. They hate ice skating. Caitlin has to be a secret ice skater. How does that work? How do you get a hockey scholarship, but you still have time to secretly be an ice skater with a very intense Russian coach? This is chaotically insane. <laughs> it really should have been a story about her burning out and quitting yeah. the ice in general. Mm-hmm. Um, I would watch that movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, better movie, say the last dance, you know, like when she's like doing too much ballet and there's that scene, I think she like peels off a toenail or something. Yeah. Ugh, yeah. Or like her her ballet shoes are bloody like that should have happened here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We meet the roommate and I write, oh, my God, another character. <laughs> like, Look there. I mean, we were reading so many people. Val was doing so much business today because there's so many friggin people in this movie. I know. And it's weird because we technically met her because she was she's on the hockey team. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we like met her, but we didn't yeah. really meet her. And so it's confusing. Like you could easily be like. Oh, this is a brand new person we've never yeah. seen before. I don't know. They, I, the whole logic of this narrative makes no sense. It's insane. Yeah. It's like every sport has their own cast of characters, um, including yeah. uh, Christy Yamaguchi. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Caitlin has the poster of Christy Yamaguchi and she shows mm. it to her roommate. And her roommate's like, awesome. And Caitlin's like, you like? Roommate says, me love. And I was like, okay, I can rock with this chick. (laughs) But she likes it so they could use the Christy Yamaguchi poster for target practice because they hate (laughs) ice skating so much. Mojo comes in with some incense. I believe this might be some of the culturally appropriative things you were mentioning. Ronnie is the captain and Ronnie kind of (laughs) sucks. The figure skaters also hate Caitlyn. Um, this is where they're like showing off their skills and Natasha's like, Lutz, more like Flutz. Because she wanted them to do a Lutz, but they were being more mm. Flutz. <laughs> Bob and Ginger are mad that Caitlin's no longer around. No one told Bob and Ginger this whole plan. <laughs> but they they're were- like at coffee being like, hmm? what? <laughs> like Bob and well, Ginger. I'm sorry, what are you talking about? <laughs> their whole income source is right. just gone. They're not important enough to be told what Caitlin's doing with her life, but they are important enough to still be in the movie. I don't get it. <laughs> I mean, I get it, but I don't get what the movie thinks. Like, I know what what's going on, but I don't think anyone else does. Okay. Uh, in a classic Queen's Gambit move, Caitlin befriends the janitor at her school. <laughs> like, <laughs> I didn't even think of that. Oh, my God. That's oh my so God. funny. <laughs> what else is an ostracized girl to do but befriend the janitor? That's so funny. Um, all right, this is where the mom starts to take a turn for the dark side because Caitlin calls her mom. She's like, "Mom's like, oh, have you made any friends?" And the she can't like the janitor, and the mom's like, "Well, at least that's something." And she's like, "Cool, you're friends with the janitor. I love that. Um, I love that this adult man is befriending my preteen daughter." Okay. First game, 
Caitlin, <laughs> of course, brings her makeup. What else? What else would she do there? <laughs> this is all genuinely. I thought this was funny when Caitlin gets out to finally play in a hockey game. They play funeral music. Bum, 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 <laughs> bum, 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 yes. bum, bum, bum. They did that multiple times. <laughs> I, the needle drops and music cues in this were the true winners. Yep. <laughs> but this is where I ask, like, what does it matter that she's bad at hockey? Like, this is where the movie was confusing me. Now I know they were trying to do two sports movies in, in one. Yeah. But I don't know if this is the right time to pitch what I would have wanted to happen in this movie. I would love to hear what you would have wanted to happen. Okay. If we wanted this to be a, fig, a figure skating movie, it should have been she gets this hockey scholarship and like the hockey team is like good or whatever. And they don't really need her. And they're kind of like the Greek chorus kind of like, hey, what's going on? You're ice skating uh, whatever. You need to loosen up. And like by playing hockey and being more physical, she like loosens up and her figure skating gets mm -hmm. even better. Mm -hmm. that, that could be one thing. Or if hockey was a thing, you know it's still the scholarship and like the figure skaters are like icy ice queen mean girls as they are and there's no way for her to get in and she finds like you know actually i have more fun doing hockey you know what fuck figure skating this is what i want to be doing like mm -hmm. one of those two things but go figure a title that has no mention of hockey whatsoever <laughs> unless it was goal figure um oh mm. i can help i can help uh <laughs> Go figure is like, no, no, no. Kids can't say no to things. They have to be good at everything. Uh, and now there's tons of millennials in their 30s with anxiety. Mm -hmm. <laughs> She's so, Caitlin is so bad at hockey that Ronnie wants to kill her. And they have to <laughs> have two men <laughs> drag this teenage girl from the, <laughs> the rink. And she's like, I'll kill her. I'll kill her. <laughs> It I don't know. It feels like they're about to throw her in the brig like she's revolting on a pirate ship. <laughs> Love Ronnie. Amy, the roommate, discovers Caitlin's secret. Uh, she thinks it's so bootsy. Um, <laughs> and she she's like, OK, I'll keep your secret. The younger brother has a friend. They're playing with a race car. Cute, cute, cute. The figure skating rival, which I believe is Pamela, hates that Ka Caitlin's talented. Then there's a fight on the ice. The um. The Buxton Bulletin has a headline that cat fight on the ice. Very, it's a very pro woman film, mm -hmm. but back to the, her rival. She's got an idea. She's like, I know how we're going to get her. Let's invite her to a party. Mm, party, uh, party, party, party. Caitlin is peer pressured into this party party. And she's like, oh, I'll just go for the party for a little bit. Then I'll go for my 9 p.m. practice. What is her life? That's crazy. Spencer catches Caitlin working hard and he's like, oh, wow, this girl who I never gave a chance is actually good at something. Who knew? <clears throat> Can't stand Spencer. <laughs> this mother hates her children is my note. <laughs> she cannot be bothered with anyone. This is, I think this is when she's doing yoga and the son's mm -hmm. like, can I talk to you? And she's like, I'm trying to relax. I've got ridden. Well, I've gotten rid of one child. I'm working on getting rid of another one. You. OK, so we're at this party, party, party. Um. You know how you go to a party and you instantly want to help out? Caitlin's like, what can I do? And they're like, oh, get this thing from the closet. And she's like, party, party, I'm on it. She goes into the closet. You know, this movie tries to do too much. Either lock her in the closet or dunk her in paint and embarrass her. These girls are like, we're going to do both. <laughs> we're going to. The ultimate mean girls. Ultimate mean girls. We're going to trash your body, but then also lock you away. What did the sign say? Who's the favorite Sputnik now or something? Yeah, something like that. Whatever. Caitlin is embarrassed and then she gets out um, and she's like, I have to go to practice. She goes to the ice rink. This is also crazy. Natasha is like, this is the first time you're late and you clearly look like someone attacked you with paint. I'm not going to forgive you. I'm done with you. You're dead to me. Because <laughs> that's how we do it in Putin's Russia. Um, <laughs> also... Natasha had a, had a gift for her that night. Christy Yamaguchi. Yeah. Christy Yamaguchi has entered the chat. She's actually in the movie. I do. I think I remember the trailer for this and it was just that Christy Yamaguchi was in the movie. It didn't tell me anything <laughs> else about this movie. <laughs> so naturally, Pamela is there and she's getting tutelage from Christy Yamaguchi. OK. Uh, Caitlin is like dead. You're you can't do this. Um, there's what I call the trash montage where it's just like 
Caitlin being terrible at everything. She gets a D plus on her test. Um, her mom still won't talk to her because her mom hates her. Um, <laughs> she quit and everyone, she quit. <laughs> Isn't this when she comes home and she quit and everyone's like, yeah, we figured you would. Like her mom's like, yeah, mm-hmm. I thought. Oh, yeah. And the, the dad and the brother exchange a bet. They exchange a bet. Yeah. Like no one had faith in her. No one believed in her. They couldn't but care less But then mom that she's wasn't expecting her. And so that's when her bed wasn't there. <laughs> And she's like, oh, we thought you were actually going to stay at school for the entire semester. I'm like, she's 14. She's 14. And emergencies happen. This mother. <laughs> this mother. <laughs> this is one bad mother. Shut your mouth. Why, uh, you oughta. Why, uh, she also failed to tell her daughter, who is obsessed with figure skating, that she figure skated. That would like, not have happened. How is that even possible yeah. that you would not find that out about your parent? Yeah. Yes. So mom sold her bed. And yeah, this is where like there's that box of stuff. And it's like it's her stuff on top of her mom's stuff because the mom was like also ashamed of her skating past and was going to sell it all. And the logic is crazy. So Caitlin's like, oh, my gosh, my mom did skating and didn't tell me. So I'm going to continue to skate. She's like back to Buxton. Well, you know. It's like the hockey team went with her because when she gets back to school, they're like, hey, we like you now because you took all the shit we gave you and you still want to be on the team. So you're on the team, girl. And then we have the success montage where things are going great. And, you know, she's doing good at school. because She carries a stack of books with her wherever she goes. Spencer is like looking at her studying and he's like, man, and she reads. I like this girl. She does yoga with the hockey team. Yeah. Or ballet. Ba- mm-hmm. Ballet. Which is, yeah, crazy. They were already doing yoga moves on the hockey team. They were doing what I know to be called a pigeon pose, where you put, like, you know, you lay your mm-hmm. calf down. We all know. But, yeah, <laughs> she teaches them ballet moves. And I guess she's still good at figure skating because Caitlin cannot be stopped like a locomotive. And around this time is where we get my favorite line. I can't believe how much fun it is to have friends. Girl, <laughs> get help. <laughs> <Stop>. <laughs> Please. <laughs> but, yeah, she gives them ballet I think she gives them color coordinated mouth guards. Um, yeah. And they start winning. And now, for my truly my favorite scene of this whole movie, good old Shelby, diabetes singer, um, the syringe. I didn't think I would see a loose needle in a <laughs> channel original movie. But wouldn't you know it? Go figure. <laughs> Go figure. I completely forgot about that. The most pointless moment uh, ever. Absolutely. That's why it was so crazy when you said this actress, this was her last movie. <laughs> right. <laughs> she was like, I've never subjected myself to this ever again. <laughs> so it's like, and is that the thing? Is that the thing? She's like, oh, God, I have diabetes. I'll never be good at figure skating because of this. I don't know. She. It's sort of like she has, I, I don't honestly, I literally don't understand the needle or the diabetes at all, Mm -mm. because the thing is that she's old. Like, that's what the her whole thing is, that she's already 17, which they act like it's like she's 45 years old. Might as well be dead. Right. (laughs) So I I sincerely do not understand the points at all of the diabetes thing. There are no words. (laughs) Uh, Caitlin figures out a way for the hockey team to be good. So they are now and they captured the East Coast Division semifinals win. They're going to the championship. But wouldn't you know it, Caitlin is so dumb. Who doesn't know their schedule? Who doesn't know what's coming up? It's the freaking championship and the skating championship. Like everyone's talking about this for weeks. Adults know how unorganized children are. The adults in her life would be telling her this is coming up. This is coming up. We're about to do this. How is she like, oh, we won. No, wait, let me check my calendar that Natasha gave me at the beginning of the movie. What? (laughs) The hockey championship and the skating championship same day? No. Sad, Caitlin. Couldn't be me. (laughs) I have to choose hockey or skating, which is why if I wrote this movie, one of them would be bad. She would be less good at one of them. But no, 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 no. Go figures. Like, she's great at everything. Mm -hmm. Uh, Okay. (laughs) The family discusses Caitlin's choice. It becomes another bet because this family can do nothing but talk about Caitlin instead of with her. Bradley, the brother, has been having a competition with his sister. He feels (laughs) like he can't play hockey because she plays hockey, which I believe is internally sexist. Um, You dumb little kid. Cheryl Hansen gets a shout out. Thank you to Jonathan 
oh, what is, what is their name from Queer, uh, Queer Eye? Van Ness. Oh, Van Ness. Jonathan Van Ness. I, thanks to them, I do know who Cheryl Hansen is. That's a real skater. And I thought, hooray, Caitlin chose hockey. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. We'll get to that in a second. My least favorite scene is coming up. So Caitlin chose hockey. The brother's like, oh, my God. The family all goes to the skating competition, the figure skating competition, because they don't talk as a family. It's a, such a big family. You couldn't send, like, Bob and Ginger to the skating thing and everyone else goes to the hockey thing. Whatever. <laughs> So the brother's like, oh, I'll buy her time by pitting our robots <laughs> on the ice rink. And all these adults won't know what to do. They'll literally fall over themselves. Thankfully, security was covered by the Three Stooges that day. Um, <laughs> my God. Sorry to be anticlimactic, but you know what movie we're watching. The girls win the hockey <laughs> competition. They win it all. <laughs> Meanwhile, the figure skating competition, the robot is finally stopped by the big old Zamboni. This was a great scene. Love a Zamboni shout out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Back at the figure skating competition, you know what else helps to stall? Shelby, diabetes singer, quits. She quits. She's like, I'd rather spend time with my diabetes than the ice. Goodbye. <laughs> Everyone, if you have diabetes, I'm not making fun of you. I'm making fun of this movie. Okay, so Caitlin is like, okay, I can do both. She leaves the hockey competition after winning, goes to the figure skating competition, and she's like, I'm going to be fucking brave and wear my hockey skates to ice skate. And I'm like, bold choice, bold choice. Here's where she's going to show us all up. <laughs> she falls. Immediately. <laughs> Immediately. <laughs> I haven't laughed that hard this week. I'll say that. I laugh a lot. <laughs> if I was to the rank, if I was to have laugh of the week, it was that. That was the funniest thing I'd ever seen. <laughs> um, Natasha has an idea and she says a crazy line. That sometimes all you can do is throw bread at dogs. And I'm like, Natasha, I'm glad you escaped Putin's reign because he would not like you. <laughs> yep. Caitlin should not have been allowed to skate. This is disgusting. No, I agree. I agree. No. You were, first of all, you were late mm -hmm. and you fell. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's your time. Right. Yeah. You shouldn't have been allowed to go again. And you know what happened? She won. See, and that's why. Go figure. It's, she should have lost. Yeah, she yep. should have. Yep. She should have lost. Instead, she gets put on the Olympic team. That's crazy. I thought I misheard, but that's. <laughs> I was like, they couldn't have said that. I was like, well, Val and Al will tell me that I'm wrong, <laughs> that I heard this wrong. Nope. No, sorry, Damon. And then final, my last note is the real hero of the story. Pamela just says dork and leaves. I'm like, Pamela, you are right. Pamela, you know, Pamela was never late. Pamela was on time for Chris Yamaguchi. Pamela was on time for the national championship, whatever. And her name is Pamela. I mean, she's got a lot going on already. For like a 15-year-old in 2005? Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's not Pam or mm -hmm. Pammy. She's Pamela. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Pammy? <laughs> uh, <laughs> please call me Pammy. Um, <laughs> Pamela's my mother. Yeah. <laughs> All right, y'all. That's my synopsis. I am. Oh, great job, Damon! Amazing. And sweat. Amazing. <laughs> Crushed it. Thank you. Thank you. My uh, favorite part is that you, all of your comments, because that's yes. what I do. I'm a commenter. Mm -hmm. On decom, that's I thought true. it was allowed. Yeah. Oh, this is the place. Thank this you. This is where we're going to have some commentaries. Mm -hmm. That's right. All, all right. Uh, party, party. Let's play. Bingo, bingo. Party, party. Party, party, party. All right, so bingo. One hit wonder song. Go figure by Everlife. That's right. There is go figure. I forgot oh. about that. Definitely. Because what else does Everlife sing? Great question. There's a lot of bands in this soundtrack that I've never heard of before. The only one I have heard of, other than obviously Brie Larson and Raymond Simonier, is uh, Bowling for Soup. Mm, that was Bowling for Soup. Damn, mm -hmm. God. Hope okay, seven. I'm marking it because of Everlife. Breaking the fourth wall or looking into the camera? Do we count the mouth? <laughs> <laughs> that mouth looked directly into camera. That mouth was <laughs> looking at all of us. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, I say Yeah, no. I don't think so. Mm. No. Holiday themed. No. Nope. A lot of ice. Day. A lot, of ice. a lot of ice. No Christmas. No Christmas. Clunky metaphor. I, definitely clunky. I don't know if there was any metaphors. 
Well, I kept trying to figure out if like the plushies were some kind of metaphor. She had this like obsession with stuffed animals mm-hmm. um, and how they kind of were like infantilizing. But I couldn't quite put it together. So I'm going to say no. Parents who just don't get it. Yes. Yeah. Especially when your mom is actively trying to destroy your life. Yeah. She's just jealous. That that's like a film noir thing where like the mom's like, <clears throat> let me erase my daughter from my life as she goes to the sporting school. <laughs> uh cool non-parent adult. Can we count Natasha? <laughs> Uh, I was going to say Bob and Ginger. Bob and Ginger. <laughs> oh, Bob and Ginger, of course. I forgot about Bob and Ginger. They had their t- their sweatshirts at the end. <laughs> Our star. They're so cute. Had it with their little shrine to Caitlin in their home. <laughs> oh, my God. Someone too famous for a TV movie. Christy Yamaguchi. Christy Yam- <laughs> They're so lucky. <laughs> wow. I can't believe they got her. Competition to resolve central problem. Two composite two. competitions. Yeah. Not one, but two. A montage sequence. Several. Several. As Damon pointed out. <laughs> um, cliche villains. I would say not cliche because hmm. the mom was the villain. But I guess for them. High school. I would say, high school mean girls. Yeah, I would yeah. say like the bullies. Mm-hmm. Like Pamela was a cliche. Yeah. Dork. Clothes or items you owned. I was looking I really didn't see anything. I mean, I I owned hockey skates and I have a hockey stick. Okay, that counts. Rotten Tomatoes, 40 to 60 percent. Okay, so Damon, you have not looked this up, correct? Correct. I have not. Great. So both you and I are going to guess what we think it is. If we get within five percentage points, we get to feel smart. And if it's between 40 and 60, we get the box. Nice. What Um, do you think? Is it okay if my guess is not between 40 and 60? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, because my guess is 17. <laughs> I'm going to go with 34. Well, all of us would love to give it not within these terms. No. You are both wrong. No. Ugh. And it is 56. Mm-mm. That means it's half good. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what movie these people are watching. Jesus. We need to get the people who are watching Surviving Christmas to watch this movie. Right? <laughs> <laughs> That's what it deserves. 8%. Yeah. So is it now Happily Ever After? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Which. And it always she's is. She's going to the Olympics. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> A happy day for some. Mm. <laughs> Almost kissing. There was some cheek smooching. Yeah. So it's yeah. like really close. Mm-hmm. Kind of. Someone who became famous. No, I think there's someone who's stopped acting altogether. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Someone whose career ended from this movie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, betraying of one's real friends or values. No. Does she have real friends? No. Like, I feel like she's actually, like, very authentic. Just authentically a person I don't like but like I don't think she ever like goes behind her friends backs and does something that she knows they won't like her doing yeah no I think her closest friend is Christy Yamaguchi (laughs) Uh, your childhood crush no no No. nope unless anyone had a crush on the dad from Luck of the Irish Mm -mm. Mm, no Mm -mm. couldn't be me (laughs) (laughs) Obviously bad special effects or stunts. Um, I mean, it's pretty obvious that it's not her skating mm-hmm. every single time. Yeah. So I would count that. Okay. Disney Channel star? I don't think so. No. Man. No. Go figure. <laughs> Musical number. No. Nope. Damn. Damn. This is like I'm watching the movie all over again. Nope. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Magic. Absolutely not. Zero. Someone says the title of the movie. No. Mm -mm. Which is surprising. Yeah, this is one where they could have easily put it in. Yeah. Silly. Scooby Dude. Yeah. I mean, mean, the the brother kind of solves the. Yeah, he does the robot and then like her teammates like start the chant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let her escape. Yeah. So they solve it, I guess. Yeah. The heroes create the problem. 
Kind of. Oh, I mean, yeah. she doesn't like want to play hockey, but she's like, I'll do whatever. Yeah. To be with this coach. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yes. And then the lead is a fish out of water. Is this the girls hockey team? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, All right. Well, everyone, go figure. We got one bingo. We got wow. One bingo. We got one bingo. Isn't wow. our second line down? We have cool non-parents, adults, someone too famous for a TV movie, competition to resolve a central problem, a montage sequence, and cliche villains. Wow. Wow. I nice. mean, it was a time. <laughs> it was a time in our lives. And... <laughs> Party, party. Let's keep this party going for Al's game. Yay. This okay. game. Today it was one of those days where I was like, wow, creating a game sure does take a toll on you. <laughs> so, <laughs> so today's game <laughs> oh boy. is, is really fun. <laughs> and it's called, uh, you gotta pick one. That's the game. Rebecca, <laughs> you gotta pick one. In that voice. In that voice. <laughs> In this game, you are going against one another. Okay. And uh, I will ask, I will say the name of an athlete. And you will have to tell me if this athlete is a hockey player or an ice skater. Oh. You gotta pick one. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Okay. okay. Yep. Um, so in order to ring in, because there you have a 50-50 shot, uh, the first person to put their hands up like this and say, party, party. <laughs> party, party. Okay. Damon, can you get a practice in there? Oh, okay. Party, party. There we uh, go. Okay. <laughs> I'll do it. All right. So the first person to ring in, there is a possible one, two, three, four, five, six, seven points. So someone okay is going to come out a winner. And I did that on purpose because I originally only had six. And I was like, what if they die? Okay, okay. here we go. Your yeah. first, you got to pick one. Peggy Fleming. Party, party. Party, party. Oh, you got it. All right, Damon. Uh, figure skating. That is correct. Ready? Mm. Amanda Kessel. Party, party. Damon. Hockey. That's correct. Okay. Wow. Okay. Sonia Heine. Party party. Val. Figure skater? Yeah. <laughs> My gosh. I picked that one because your last name is Heine. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Kendall Coyne. Party party. Damon. Hockey? Yes. Okay. It just sounded like a hockey player. Kendall Coyne. Coin. Natalie Spooner. Party party? Val? Hockey? That is correct. Yeah. Okay. Katarina Witt. Uh, party party. Val? Uh, figure skating. Yeah. <laughs> I actually knew that one. Okay. We are tied going into our final um, one. Okay. Dorothy Hamill. Party party. Oh. Damon? F figure skating. Yay! Damon wins! <sighs> Too slow on the draw. You know, thank you. I didn't, I, I don't know what to say. Thank you so much. Congratulations <laughs> on winning. You got to pick one. <laughs> thank you. Um, humility, humility. Thank you so much. Um, thank you. Oh, God. oh my gosh. So proud. Wow. Damon, thank you so much for joining us. You're just an absolute treat. Oh my gosh. Th thank you so much for having me. I hope anything I said was audible because <laughs> I feel like <laughs> what a fever dream this movie was. Uh, so <laughs> really, I'm, yeah, it really was. It was great. It was great. Uh, but yeah, this was so fun. Anything you want to plug? I know you already mentioned your podcast, but feel free to mention it again. Anything else? Yeah. Uh, you're already listening to a podcast. So listen to more podcasts, um, podcast 616. In fact, uh, Marvel podcast, uh, I've got funny people, uh, talking about Marvel movies. And um, if you're in L.A., first Wednesday of every month, my uh, variety show, The Illuminati Hour, that I co-host with Elizabeth Andrews. Um, that's the first Wednesday of every month in Los Angeles at the Yard Theater. Don't ask me what neighborhood it's in. Just Google the Yard Theater. <laughs> it's on Melrose. That sounds very California. Where can people where can people find your tag? 
Absolutely. Uh, you can follow me at Dayman Royster on Instagram. That's D-A-Y-M-A-N-R-O-Y-S-T-E-R. Everything's on there. I If I'm doing something, I'm probably posting about it. So, yay. Follow yay. me. Yay. <laughs> follow me. <laughs> Wow. Val, any, what are we watching next week? We are watching a movie I've literally never heard of. Life is Rough. <gasps> rough spelled R-U-F-F. Let's see if I have. One could say that joke has already been made today on this podcast. <laughs> you know, we have had so many dog decoms that <laughs> yes, at this have. point, it's interesting. We have another. I guess it was time. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe there's a, I've never heard of this. Yeah. There's a bunch either. of people I know in it. I haven't looked it up yet, so I'll allow myself to be surprised. Surprise. Yes. Well, as always, please like, subscribe, leave a review, all the things. Tell us you love um, us. Yes. And as always, go and listen to our bonus episode with Holly, because for some reason, y'all don't listen to our interview episodes. And that's a crime because they're great. That is crazy. Mm -hmm. um damon we just interviewed uh holly folger who plays aunt judy in xenon i've been seeing mm -hmm. the ads for yeah. it um mm -hmm. that's huge mm -hmm. i love it huge aunt judy. Yeah. she's amazing dare i say she's great favorite she's character great. dare i say she would love to hear that yeah. uh she's a delight yes oh, very that. sweet bye val bye al bye damon bye val al this podcast was produced by me. And me. And it was edited by me. The music was composed by Michael McNally. You can find us online at thetridentnetwork.com slash decommentaries hyphen pod. And you can find us on Instagram and TikTok at decommentaries. Decommentaries is a part of the Trident Network. To learn more about our videos, live shows, and other podcasts, please visit thetridentnetwork.com. Disney Channel Original Movies. Damn it, Allie.